and John Sawat used to call the monastery our quiet corner, a place where you can get away from your responsibilities back home, your responsibilities at work, all your entanglement with family and friends. And now some time to be by yourself, to get some, get some seclusion. But seclusion is of two sorts. There's physical seclusion, there's mental seclusion. Phys physical seclusion is just this, coming out to a place where you can be a while, alone for a while. But because you're here doesn't mean you have mental seclusion. Mental seclusion means that you're secluded from your inner chatter with your cravings. We tend to bring that with us. And so when we bring it with us and we go back home, there it is all over again. Because when you go back home, the physical seclusion will be there quite so much. What you want to be able to take back is the mental seclusion, the skills that you've learned in dealing with your thoughts as they come up. One of the frustrating parts of focusing on the breath is all these other things seem to be getting in the way. Well, it's precisely the skill of cutting those things back. That's where you develop the skill that you take back home, because the thoughts that are invading you right now are thoughts that have been waiting in the wings for a long time, simply that when you're back home, lots of other responsibilities take pride of place, and then these other thoughts don't have a chance. You get here where it's quiet and these, they come barging out. Well, they're going to come barging out even when you're back home. They slip in little cracks here, little openings there. And take over your mind unless you have the skill to recognize them for what they are. These things are distraction. These are nothing you want to get along with, nothing you want to live with. So try to learn how to cut things back, cut things back, and try to be as quick and as effective with that as possible. In other words, you don't have to wait for the thoughts to come in and state their case. If you recognize, as soon as you recognize that they're out of line, okay, you cut them through. Part of the mind wants to see a thought all the way through. What's this thought about? Where is it going to go? And that curiosity is good in some cases, but in a lot of cases it's misplaced. If you can recognize right off the bat that it's coming from a bad place, it's going to lead to a bad place. Then. So learn how to cut things through, cut things through. Use the breath as a way of cutting the feet from under these thoughts, because they take their stance in the mind because they also have take a little stance in the body. There'll be a little pattern of tension here or there, maybe on your shoulder, maybe in your arm, maybe in your, someplace in your face that goes with that particular thought. If you can notice that when the thought comes, there's this pattern of tension in this part of the body, breathe through that pattern of tension. It reminds yourself you have much better ways of entertaining yourself, that there's free time to think thoughts about all kinds of stuff that don't really have any substance, and there's free time to meditate, free time to be with the breath. So let the breath fill the cracks of your life and your mind, and don't let these other things come in. And that way you can take some of this quietness that you've enjoyed here at the monastery, you can take that home with you in the skill of mental seclusion, because mental seclusion is possible even when you're lacking physical seclusion. That's what makes it worthwhile to come here, because you can take good things back home. <laughs>